Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is Daryl Guberman, CEO of Guberman PMC LLC, a quality consulting firm here in Connecticut. Uh, we have assisted companies in manufacturing, consultation, also ISO certification, all derivatives, implementation, certification for the last 13 years. Uh, our background is aerospace, over 40 plus years aerospace, medical implants, medical materials, printing and plastic distribution, where we dealt with every industry under the sun. This video today is about the Boeing 737 versus the A320, which plane is the best? Quality expert Daryl Gerberman cautions both. Hold on, both. And I'm going to tell you right now. They both use the same type of power plants engines. Um, they had a situation uh, almost a year ago with this company called AOG Technics, which were manufacturing over 50 plus critical parts for aircraft engines. Didn't matter what aircraft they were on, whether it's a Boeing or whether it's an Airbus, they're still using the same uh, a lot of them are using the same power plants, okay? Uh, what happened is you have a lot of issues with these parts and they were fudging documentation since what I've gathered since 2015. So here we are, 2024, <laughs> that's a long time. Nine years they've been doing that. So you know damn well that some of those parts migrated onto those engines that you are flying on. And don't let anybody kid you. Okay, they try as they may to tell you our regulator to the FAA, Boeing is the FAA. They've been the FAA since 2009 when they were made an FAA regulatory authority. And we have Mr. Ferrari here. We also have David Calhoun, uh, ex-CEO of Boeing, rightfully so. He didn't even know what the word escape meant when asked about. An escape, and I'm gonna tell you again, ladies and gentlemen, is called a rejection. They don't want you to know that. An escape, it sounds better on the air. What's an escape? A convict escapes, for God's sake. <laughs> if you're at your mother-in-law's house, you try to escape through the back door, don't you? That's an escape. It's not talking about <laughs> your, your, the house falls apart. That's a quality issue. Well, with aircraft and helicopters and everything else, cars, an escape is no more than a rejection. And David Calhoun should have said that. Instead, he says, our employees say escape. And the news reporter asked what an escape was and he couldn't do it. So, Mr. Farai, thank you very much for coming. Let me just show you this because this is really unbelievable. And the reason why we bring in the A320 and the 737 is very easy. They both have the same accreditation bodies. One might have UKS accrediting. Another one might have Accredia. Uh, another one will have, um, uh, you have Accreditia, UKAS, and ANAB, another. And what it is is that ANSI, ANAB are the standard for UKAS and Accreditia and all the different other accreditation bodies out there. They take full legal responsibility. They are underwriters for those accreditation bodies. I've got the emails. I've got it all. You will find in the description, <clears throat> you will find all the pertinent data, all the different articles. I don't want to show you the litany of placards that we have to discuss this because it would be a 20 minute video. And I've given my depositions many times on video and you probably fell asleep after the first two seconds. Narcolepsy, I have to tell you that. It would give you narcolepsy. I try to be animated, but uh, you can only be animated with goldfish so long. You know how it is. It's, I think it's six seconds for a fish and seven seconds for a human being. I think that's a reverse noun. I don't know. But anyway, we're gonna tell you this. The problem is, is that you have AOG Technics put falsified parts into the system since 2015, and then all of a sudden, they caught it. I guess there was an engine issue, they caught it. A lot of those parts are on planes that you're sitting on, and don't think, I haven't heard them, that they ha I haven't read anything where they said, well, we got all the parts. They're never going to tell you that. they got some of those parts that are flying on the planes. On top of it, let me just tell you about Boeing. I did say to you that, uh, well, let me show it to you. In 2002, Boeing gave up their supplier audits to a piece of paper called AS9100, which is an international standard for aerospace. They gave it up. And it basically said, an on-site Boeing survey of suppliers, quality system, if need be. Our preference is to deal with proven suppliers with excellent quality performance and not have to do on-site quality system audits. So, <laughs> basically what it says is this. I'm glad you're here, sir, because uh, it's very impressive that we have uh, two CEOs from major air, 
airplane manufacturers in the studio. It was very nice for all of you to come. Uh, right now, David Calhoun, uh, it was tough for me to get him out of the golf cart this morning to bring him into the studio, but thank you. He was trying to clean off his cleats a little bit and he had some other, I didn't want him to walk through the house with his cleats on, so he had to take his shoes off. But anyway, it said, send in your AS9100 certificate as long as it's accredited by ANAP. And I'm gonna tell you what, ANSI ANAB is also mentioned on their supplier portal, which says must be ANSI ANAB or internationally equivalent. On that supplier bulletin, if you look further, it says ANSI ANAB. Uh, and also, <clears throat> they also sit on ANAB's board, ANSI ANAB's board, that can grant suspend and withdraw certification, so it constricts the ability for true oversight. There is no oversight with these quality certifications that are distributed by ANSI ANAB or any other accreditation body under the International Accreditation Form, which is incorporated in Delaware, which they are underwriters for ANSI ANAB or underwriters for them, and along with the Australian uh, company, the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. You can't make this up. ANSI was the foundation of the IF. They made the IAF, the International Accreditation Forum. They needed some sort of front there or something to filter, I guess, money. Who knows? <laughs> but any organization, we wrote a lot of them. Any of those international organizations are no more than an ANSI ANAP accreditation. We have the actual email from uh, Randy Dory, who at the time in 2014 was the vice president of ANAP. He's the chairman of the IF and the, uh, also the principal in the IF tax report, which he was in complete control. And he wrote us and he said, uh, an IAF MLA, which is a multilateral agreement or MRA, a multi-regional agreement, IAF MRA or IAF MLA, are equivalent in accreditation to an ANSI ANAB accreditation. So by them being underwriters, any failure in the systems or product failure goes on their shoulders because they are considered an underwriter. And an underwriter takes all legal responsibility. But the problem is, is that you have, you know, you have federal agencies on board like the FBI, the DOJ, the DOD, the FTC, et cetera, that, you know, th that are protecting them. And this protection has got to go because there's a lot of failures in the system. So we showed you that. The final thing we're going to show you is this. This is from 2009. It's an article concerning that the FAA gave up autonomy to uh, uh, Boeing. And this tells you right off the bat that Boeing is an FAA regulator. When I heard David Calhoun, I, I guess he's quitting because if he was brought up under Senate subcommittee hearing and they had me there asking him questions, he would go because he did that when he was asked the term escape. He didn't know what that meant. And that's, gonna, that's in other videos that we have that he did not know. We're going to try to throw that video down below so that you can hear him hesitate when it came to the term escape. So this is from the FAA, and the FAA said this. The FAA increased authority of Boeing's commercial airplanes division to self-certify its own aircraft. That means you build it, you basically design it, build it, fly it, and approve it. And it goes on further, and this tells you about the MCAS system that Boeing didn't have to tell. He didn't, Boeing did not hoodwink anyone. They are the FAA. I read a letter to Schumer and some other politicians that said, you know, I think from Ethiopian Air, and my heart goes out to uh, the, the families of the people that were lost in those aircraft. But let me tell you something, your lawyer did a shitty job. Honestly, they didn't come up with this. I read the law briefs. They didn't come up with that ANSI ANAP or underwriters. Thus, they should be taking a lot of responsibility for certifying the, uh, Boeing. Uh, for I'm sure certifying the, you know, you look deep enough. I'm sure the company that made the MCAS system um, ba basically, you know, or well, Boeing designed or whatever, but the electronics company is probably ANSI ANAP accredited or uh, a derivative of them like UKAS or Credit or what have you. And that's what happens. So let me read a little bit further. The system allows Boeing employees to perform tasks on behalf of the FAA that include oversight of testing and product standards along with certification of aircraft technologies and new aircraft designs. The new aircraft technologies would be the MCAS system. So those poor people from Ethiopian Air, your lawyer didn't do a good job. And I, I fear to say that the Alaska Air attorneys, they're, they're really salivating over the $160 million that Boeing just gave Alaska Air. They're probably, <sighs> but remember this, ladies and gentlemen, 
They did a statistical analysis of both plaintiff and defendant attorneys about did they feel that their lawyers colluded together, you know, worked together to make the final outcome. Well, when you're dealing with $160 million as the initial payment from Boeing to Alaska Air, those lawyers are really probably salivating like <laughs> I don't know, unbelievable, like Pavlov's dog, when you ring the bell, he drooled. Well, that's basically what those attorneys are doing. But remember this, the statistic was the plaintiff and, the the plaintiff and defendants both came out, 85% of them said that they felt that their attorneys colluded. To make matters worse is that I received a letter, we gladly show it to you, 203-556-1493 or Daryl, D-A-R-O-A-L-T-Q-R-S at yahoo.com. An attorney of 40 years wrote us a note when we asked him about this mess. And he said, both state and federal uh, courtrooms are no more than blue smoke and mirrors. It's a charade. So I would suggest those people, if you're looking at this video from Alaska here, to contact me because we've tried to contact your attorneys and they got our information. We gave them a lot of data, but they need me in the courtroom to explain it because it's very convoluted, this acronyms and everything else. My telephone number again is 203-556-1493 or Daryl, D-A-R-Y-L, T-Q-R-S at yahoo.com. And the Boeing 737 versus Airbus A320, which plane is the best? Quality expert, Daryl, government cautions both? Not really. You have suspect parts in the engines, possibly. You have companies that are fudging documentation. You have a problem with this. And everybody says, Daryl, it's so safe to fly. Good luck. God bless.